one paragraph summarizing, and then we're going to go. It's interesting. He analyzes what the Chachmei uh, Talmud, the Amayroim, and the Tanoim, what they did in their times in terms of their importance that they attributed to Chovas Halavavos. So we're starting from Amar Mechaber. Um, oh yeah. Now the whole thing is the Mechaber. It's all the Chovas Halavavos talking. Mechaber means the author, but it could be the translator putting these words Amar Mechaber. But I, I, it's, it's, I guess it's like the beginning of a new chapter, kind of. Since I it became uh, understood to me, I arrived at this understanding that it's an obligation. The mitzvah salavavas is not something that's extra, or it's not something that's not relevant. And we are personally have to be involved in this like we brought all the proofs that he brought before. And I saw that no Sefer was written addressing these specifically. And I also thought and about the current situation of the generation that he lived in that they it's not like people understood all of these mitzvahs intuitively and they didn't need anything to be explained. It was Mikaitzer Daitam Lavinam. They actually didn't Kotzer Das means they they had a, a lack of understanding. Culture came last night, some Masasik Bahim. So they don't understand them, for sure they're not involved in keeping and performing these mitzvahs. Vaya Mikhesid Alikim Alai Shahi Irani Lakra al Khafma Samatkum. And it was the kindness of Hashem on me that Hashem inspired me that I should delve into the matters of the knowledge of Chachma Samat, when he translates the inner life of the duties of the inner person, of their own thoughts, their intellect, and purifying their own desires, and so on. Clarifying their understanding and their commitment to HaKadosh Baruch So... So basically, this is all leading up to writing the Sefer Chavos Olavavos, that number one, it is an obligation, it's applicable to us, it's something which hasn't been treated through with a, a Sefer of, in and of its own until now, and, and uh, people don't have a proper understanding of it, and now he's saying that, he doesn't say, and I do, but he says, Hashem was so kind to me that He inspired me to look into these matters and to get involved here. So, now how would He know that? Well, He knows. Ah, haha, that's the whole book. Mm. He knows. <laughs> that's the whole book. He bottom, knows bottom that line, bottom line. What He does no, know. What He does know. What He wrote he, in this line yeah. is that He has become passionate about this subject. Mm. No, no. I'm sorry. I disagree. Uh -oh. Okay. He so hasn't become well, passionate. He didn't write the book. Real, the, the thing is, he, he says that God loves me so much and he gave me the ability to be able to write the same. That's what he's saying. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. we're going to get to that maybe a little bit later. But in this line itself, all he says is that Hashem inspired me, Lachgar, <coughs> in order to investigate about it. So maybe it's humility. Maybe it's his humility, mm. but. He doesn't say, I've become a master over the topic in this line. What he, he has become accepted as such in Klai Yisrael. But in his humility, he's writing that this is something which nobody else wrote about, and I have been devoting much effort towards this, and it's something that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So he now has the ability. Yeah. To uh, we're going to see later on in Akdama the uh, internal struggle that the that he went through before actually uh, picking up his pen and writing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's, he's going to explain that later. We're not going to get there today. Um, you have many great sages throughout the generations that they did something not because they felt that they were Mr. Perfect in terms of the topic that they could treat it perfectly, but because they felt that there was a need mm. and there was a void and they had what to offer, they had what to benefit people. So it's not, 
in such a situation, that's where a person steps steps forward. Okay, here this translated English in the English translation, interesting translation, that he read of the conduct of the early masters. So maybe there was a, a, a book of history of the Masse Kadmeinenu, or maybe he means like he's going to bring proofs later from the Talmud, from the Gemara, that the Gemara speaks about certain tendencies and comments from the Amiraim about their times. What we accepted, what we what we didn't pass down regarding the matters of our earlier sages. So how did they feel about <coughs> this topic? They were more zaris. They were they they stepped forward with more zrizos, more alacrity. And they put more effort in their own obligation from what they were, what they were obligated. We'll call it Shulchan uh, Aruch, right? To know what they had to do in performance of the mitzvah is what they had to do in terms of their kavanos. This they put more efforts into uh, in comparison to that which they were. Uh, involved in the uh, parts of learning that uh, that he's, that he's, he calls that that um, not the direct dinim. Okay, what was the Torah about the dinim that were that that were taught in the Mishnah, that were taught in the Gemara? That's what they put most of their time in. That which results from that, that if you put the two dinim together and you apply a different situation that they weren't involved in so heavily. And difficult uh, questions, but they're, they're, not, they're unusual. He says that the questions that are bizarre are unusual questions. They could arise, it could happen, <laughs> but they, they weren't busy in their base madrash of the Ge'ainim and the earlier sages with these questions of, okay, what if this would happen, how should we set up the halakha, just in case somebody comes to ask me this question. Their matter, their, 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 their learning was, ra- was rather, it was more so in general, of what, what, is, what's, what state, what is the halakha psukha? And what are the the rules that um, that will that the halakha will be derived from? Luvar inyan iser v'heter. What is mutter? What's aser? What's mutter? The acharkach, and then the second second to that of the tariyag mitzvahs of knowing what's the iser, what's the heter, what's the halakha. They also the the next thing on their agenda was. They were very involved in their own, uh, we'll call cheshba na nefesh, right? Seeing now how how could I fix up my own ma'asim, levarim ma'aseya and the chavos libaisam? How could I make it that I, my intentions are more pure, my kavanos are proper, I'm being more honest? That's what they were involved in. Now, when it <coughs> What happened when such questions came to them that they didn't delve into previously and they weren't Isaac in their base medrash? So that's, that's where they had a whole system set up what to do then, okay? And then so he goes on to the next paragraph. What, what happened when a Shaila came up and it was something that wasn't Beferish? It was something that was Mitoldas Adina. It was, wasn't the din itself, the actual law. It was something that would be derived from it. And then they, on the spot, would start working on that question with their own reasoning, with their own logic, based on their understanding of, of what they had learned. And they would derive 
what the Allah would be in that scenario from the fundamental that they had in their hands already they didn't bother they didn't bother themselves to think about these scenarios beforehand okay, literally that means because the matters of the world are trivial in their eyes now this is a line which I, I, I want to get back to, 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 to try to understand this because to me this is a difficult line so he's saying that they they didn't bother to to go to all of the various scenarios that could come up when they needed to pass in the halacha halacha lemaisa in that matter if it was something that when they thought about it they said look this is clear from the prophets from the rabbeim if, if what they had in their hands was clearly uh, indicated what to do in this case so then then they stopped there they said okay this is the ruling in this path in this way but let's say it wasn't so clear cut it was something that was was um, a result of you know you have to compare situations and and so on Toladas means something that's that's um, a result or it, it comes out of the applications of comparing you know the the in more modern scenario or a little different case than than what was said beferish something that they could derive from from the fundamentals that they had received so again they looked into it they thought about it if now in their base medrash there was more than one uh, rob there there was dayanim and they all agreed they would pass in the halacha let's say they argued one said it's not the fairish and this is the halacha it's more similar to this mishnah this one said no it's similar to this mishnah so what would they do they would argue about it they would discuss it they would argue they would compare and finally they would vote and they would go after the majority if they argued, he brings the Gemara in Sanhedrin, and here's the quote: The question was asked in front of the Sanhedrin in the big court. If they had heard the halacha directly, so they passed They said the law. The imlav, they would vote. Rabu amitaren tiheru. If there were more uh, sages that said it's tar, then they would say it's pure. Rabu Amitamim, if those who said impure were more Kimeu, they they pass in this tamim. Okay. Now I think all of this is part of a, a general point that the Chavis Lavavas is making is that it could be very, very time consuming for uh, for us learning to try to go into every single case that could arise, you know, uh, that could take up all of our time. And they didn't want all of their time to be taken up with that. So, even though it's learning Torah, what they did is they said, let's get very, very clear what is said. Okay, maybe they even memorized it with Torah Shabbat Peh. We let's know what the halachas that were for sure clearly said exactly how they were said and let's get what the so the fundamental the point here is and then once they had that they could go ahead and when any case came up they could use the the groundwork that they had to decide and sometimes the Allah wouldn't follow the way they had understood because it would follow like some of their contemporaries who, who outvoted them but they weren't busy with thinking about all of the cases that possibly, you know, eventually could come up. Me'ikr shebi yadam, yachid b'rabim halachki rabim, is a 
a basic basic uh, <coughs> rule principle in in ruling halacha that yachid v'rabim halacha k'rabim if there's a majority general consensus and a yachid is a is a individual opinion so they would follow the majority opinion. The Chibru also they made a uh, a chibor. It sounds like he's calling. It's referring to Maseches Avos. Sounds like he's 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 calling it like a summary that they should have in the what was passed down from what is proper and what is correct in how the person con- conducts himself. Chibur Maseches Avos Musaram the Yisha Midaisam and the Kubalas Miam Kalish Bezmanu V'Mikaymo. So they got certain fundamentals from each generation. They wrote those down and they had it. Okay. Now, uh, what, what I wanted to get back to is that line that I said. Why? Why was it that they didn't? Uh, why was it that they didn't trouble themselves, their minds, over cases that were? not relevant to them at the present time and they never knew when they might come up but they hadn't come up yet so the reason he gave is that matters of the world seem trivial to them so what does this mean? in other words matters of the world I understand matters of the world is like um, Gashmias would be called matters of the world something that uh, enjoyment of this world that uh, you know we could say this is only a transient world why are we getting so caught up in all of the establishments and enjoyments of this world we're only here for 70 years we're here for uh, 80 years we say right but it's still it's not forever so <clears throat> so as much as this world is only temporary so that's why matters of this world are trivial to them but what I'm saying is I understand that when it comes to the comforts of this world then you could say what well, it's not so important they they forgo, they would forgo the comforts of this world because of what because <clears throat> I won't be so comfortable here and I'll be comfortable later on <coughs> but when it comes to learning in terms of what to focus on, why is it this the reason that they didn't bother themselves to look into all of the cases of what could uh, <coughs> what could come up because the matters of the world were, were, were trivial to them. It's something which which uh, I grapple with understanding what he means here. But but I think that I think what he means is that they felt that the most important thing was building their inner world, understanding the fundamentals. In other words, let's say that case, so to speak, never came up. So how much would they be losing out? So the way the Chavos Levavos is making it sound. <coughs> it's like, if that case came up, they would have to deal with it, and they would deal with it, and they would deal with it responsibly. But if it didn't come up, then what, what would they have gained from having delved into that case? They, do, they gained that they would know what to do in every single situation, scenario in this world. How would they know if it would come up? How would they know at this point in time what will happen tomorrow? They, would, they didn't know. They didn't know. That's what I'm saying. But I was, I was, if, then how do they decide what they're going to learn? How well, going to one thing that they learned was all of the halachas that were passed down to them, that they were taught, like the dinim, we'll call it, we could call it Mishnah, or we call it Gemara, and that, they definitely, they went through, they, they learned that, they knew it, they became fluent in it. Okay? And then, they also thought about what's the fundamental here that's being communicated, what's the rule that's being, that's being said. Then, when some case came up that they didn't foresee, they could take the rule and the principle, and they could see how would what would this halakha say about this in this case. Right. Precedent and so on. <coughs> but, but he's saying about the 
the Chachmei Atamur, and the, and the example he gives in the Sanhedrin, is that when the case came up, they hadn't always dealt with it previously. What happened? Why didn't they? What, they needed to, 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 to sit and judge on it? So he, he's understanding yes, because they didn't, they didn't go into this case specifically beforehand. Now they needed to sit on it right now, because this is when it came up. I, I get that. It means it's a combination of two things. It's prioritizing the things that are immediate and you need them right now. And number two, why spend too much time on something that's potentially theoretical? You can't go to court, for example, and say, I want to know what would happen if I did this, did this to my neighbor. You haven't done it. Right. So why should the court waste time worrying right. about if you do that to your neighbor? You're saying but, the same way the court wouldn't waste time with you if it wasn't really relevant to you right now. So why should you spend your time on it now if it's not relevant to you? Spend time on what is relevant to you right now. And what is relevant to you right now is, this is what I'm getting for, get, get, trying to understand this line, what's relevant to you <coughs> is what has eternal importance. That what your connection to Gadosh Baruch Hu and your knowledge of the fundamentals, right, and the, the klolim and the halachas psukas, that you have to know. Even if the cases never come up, you have to know what it says. But all those cases that you might never encounter, maybe you will, maybe you won't, those, if you get to Om Haba and you never encounter that case, you will have your world, your Om Haba world, your world to come, will be complete. You'll have that relationship with Hashem. Your mitzvahs that you did will be done wholeheartedly. You'll be, have been an honest person. You'll have, you know... <coughs> made sure that all your business dealings were straight and just and there's no there's no, no you, we can't catch you anywhere everything's going to be perfect and that's what they needed to focus on um, okay it's just a, a this is the the approach that it seems like it's coming out your, your question I could look up in today you could look up in case law right and find out exactly what would happen if right. to, so that's what you study you, you study that but but this is different, isn't it? I think you're talking about do you, do you waste time on something that's never happened. Do you write in case it does happen? Do you wait until it happens? Well, your question was about what would happen if I did this to my neighbor. It's probably in case law. Because it may have happened. Right. Right. Exactly. <coughs> you look at that. Because it's, because I just want to say a word about what we learned today in the, in the yeshivas, in the kolim. We learned b'iyun. And the... the um, we, and if you look in the Sparm today, you do find many cases. And throughout the generations, more and more cases come up. More Sparm, more cases, more fine-tuned. Chilukim, what would be in this case that's in between this case and in between this case? How would the halacha apply in that case? Um, the, the, the reason, uh, very often, for what we'll call it a nafkamina, in order to understand what the fundamental, what the principle that's being taught here is, is what's being communicated, is a, a way to do that is to say, okay, how would this apply in a, in a different case that wasn't explicitly said? Why are you doing that? Not because you want to just theoretically, just in case it comes up. If you're a Pisces, right, they say about... Uh, uh, in certain pipes given that they, that they would do such a thing. They needed to be ready to say it on the spot. They would think about how it would apply in such a thing. But even uh, what I'm saying for us, learning in the base, in the base Medrash, we want to understand what is really be, being said here. What's at the heart of the matter? So if you want to know, is the reason for this halacha A, or is the reason B, you could say, well, let's find a case where reason A... Uh, where, the, where there's a difference, where only one of the reasons applies and the other one doesn't apply. So then we'll really get what is being taught here. Last week, and uh, learn, your, you know, learn a Mishnah every day, we learned that on Shabbos, you don't reduce, a fra in other words, set a fracture, and a whole bunch of other things would be like not getting uh, okay. a wound so you only have a certain window before stitches, you know, it would be effective. Uh, could you reduce okay. a fracture, etc.? The Mishnah is Mesech Shabbos. Yeah, exactly. And then, I, you know, like I said, this is, but we don't, today we don't do that. And he said, that's exactly it. We don't do that today. Mm -hmm. 
So is right now. So if you learn the Gemara on that, still we will learn out many halachas that are relevant for us nowadays, because of the you'll get the the, the klalim, you'll get the fundamentals of what was behind the halachic ruling, and then you'll with modern day medicine and modern day um, application, <coughs> you'll be able the paiskim will rule based on that which was taught from that Mishnah, from that Gemara. But they'll have to get not just what the what was said there, but what the reasoning behind it was. And once they get that, then they could they could apply it. But the reasoning was faulty. The reasoning at that time, you know, uh, I mean, it's true. But the reasoning behind behind the halakha was that in order to preserve a person's health, this is what was considered necessary. So now for us to preserve health in a similar type of situation, how would we deal with that? <clears throat> what would we do if a person wasn't really in a sakana now, but they could come to a sakana later? What would we do if a person was, was ill in a situation that, okay, <clears throat> it's not the same remedy as they had in those times, but it will still have modern day application. So do we question every Gemara then? <clears throat> Basically, in our learning, we do question every Gemara, but the questioning is, what is the fundamental that's being taught here? Yeah, and it's necessary to know that in order to know uh, how to apply it, for sure. Um, the Chavos Levavos is making a point here that in the generations that preceded him, and it, there's a little hint that maybe <coughs> in his generation it wasn't so much like this, but the generations that preceded him, they made the main focus on what was immediately relevant, and then second, and, the, and and that which was explicitly stated, and then second to that was trying to purify their own their own avodas It's Hashem. almost like saying that was then and this is now. Yeah, he didn't say that. He didn't say this is now because he doesn't want it to be different. He wants us to to, to hold on. But do we hold? This. You know, like then do we hold everything that was then? And you know, it's almost like uh, we're turning into. Uh, and in that, that's not for us. Our generation, we do this. <laughs> okay, for this you need your local Orthodox rabbi. But what I will tell you something. I don't want to disturb the one at the end of the table. What I will tell you something is that when a person learns, they need to have it get it clear what they learn. And what in previous generations they had such a <coughs> capacity so much knowledge at once and what was clear to them without further uh, delving into for us we might spend a few days on just a small amount of learning because that's what it takes for us to get it clear and if we wouldn't get it clear we would just move on to the next thing so then we wouldn't have really, really even learned properly the part that we learned so yeah we are limited in what we could accomplish but we could do as much as we can in each thing to learn what we learn to get it clear. Okay. Bal Yadam. Okay, we're up to the Anshia Talmud. Okay. Anshia Talmud, the rabbis, the Amarayim of the Gemara, Amra Rabbi Sayyam. They said about their about their masters. That would show about the greatness of the depth of their wisdom. The and also how much they worked on perfecting their own actions. It says in the Gemara Brachas. Veshani derav Yehuda kula tenuye v'nezikin hava. In the year, in the years of Rav Yehuda, all of the teachings that they had were in the area of Nezikin. The Anon Kamasnein and Tuva. We, this is the students saying, right, and maybe the next generation or maybe two generations later, we learn much more. We don't only deal with Nezikin. The Yehuda. 
can have a shalit misan, they have a asi mitra. Rav Yehuda, as soon as he took off his shoe, which was a sign of uh, uh, fasting and and uh, showing distress that they were in a time of drought and 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 great need for rain. As soon as taking the shoe off, it, when he took off, he physically took off his shoe, mm-hmm. like the, taking off the leather shoes is a sign of mourning, of um, like we had even on Yom Kippur. It's one of the chamish inuyim mm-hmm. that's taking uh, some of the comfort away from us. So Rabbi Yehuda, when it was when it was uh, just when he started the fast, he just took off his shoe. Talking about that it was a big drought and they needed rain. Have a mitra. Right away, rain would come. He got immediate response. Nanan, but we in our later generation, kama aynei non ve'aslinan, kama aynei non We fast and we go and we fast and we come fast after fast. And there's uh, nobody up there is paying any attention to us. Amrulay. So they said to him, doesn't say who the conversation is between. The earlier generations. <coughs> it's true, they didn't learn as much as we were learning. They were learning all about Nezikin. We're learning so much more. But they were most their nefesh. They put their life on the line for Kedusha Hashem, for the sanctity of the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Anan, la masrina nafshin HaKadosh Hashem. We are not as committed. We are not as deeply committed as they were. That deep commitment, that Mesiras nefesh, that is why, that is why Hashem valued their Rabbi Yehuda and his generation. What was so much greater about him than us? The Amru, okay, it doesn't go into the Gemara of what the story was that indicated the mysterious nefesh, but the point is that this didn't come from just superficiality. This came from Rabbi Yehuda being very, very committed to to uh, deepening and intensifying his Avodah Hashem. I think I saw in one of the commentaries, it's been a few weeks since I saw this, but I think it, what I saw is that one of the commentaries says that why in the Zikin, because the, there's a teaching from Kazal that says that if a person wants to be a Chassid, he wants to be somebody who finds favor in the eyes of God and doesn't just do um, the letter of the law, but he makes a nachas ruach, he makes a favor in front of Hashem. So, he's a chassid, he will learn matters of nezikin. Now that's interesting. What is matters of nezikin? Nezikin is damages. But, um, it's well known that Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, who was a very uh, uh, big uh, founder of the Muslim movement, he was um, invested great effort into the matters of Nazikin specifically. And uh, I think the idea, the concept is that for what we gain an appreciation for what somebody else's money is from learning the matters of Nazikin, mm-hmm. right? And the same thing from learning Sanhedrin, for example. Even if it's not going to come, person, he won't sit on the, on the bed, on the court. And he won't give somebody skila or sreifa, right? But he's learning the way the Torah views the, 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 the halachas, the transgressions. This is something that really warrants skila. This is something that really warrants sreifa. This is how, this is where this belongs. This is where this belongs. And when a person learns the zikin, they get um, a certain awe, a fear and carefulness is he rest of somebody else's money. And okay, that's what I saw in one of the commentaries in terms of why in the in, in Rebuda's times they Kula Tunuyev and Ezekiel Havel. That was his part of his Avodah Hashem. I came across a, a fascinating quote uh, this this week, this past week, in uh, uh, one of the Rishonim that we were learning that it relates to Rav Yehuda. 
um, it said that there was the quote was that there was no greater tzaddik than Rav Yehuda. That's uh, in the words of the Rishonim. Mm. Why? Because of the story, the question about whether you can be lenient, lenient in a certain matter, you have to be strict. And Rav Yehuda was asked a question uh, whether uh, whether a person should be machmir in a certain case, he should be stringent. And he said, no, you shouldn't be. So the postkin was saying, Rav Yehuda, uh, and he himself wasn't stringent. He was a, there was no tzaddik like Rav Yehuda. That's what it says there. So I didn't know when I learned it, like that seems like a pretty random thing to say, no tzaddik like Rav Yehuda. But we see in this teaching that the Chavaz Lovavis is bringing here now from the Gemara and Baruch HaTavchav, that Rav Yehuda was considered uh, a tremendous tzaddik, that the second he would take off his shoe in distress, mm -hmm. immediately like he got a response that Hashem answered his tefillahs. The um, Amru it says in the Gemara of Zara, Amru of Unu Kol Eisek Matera Belvad. Anyone who just learns Torah, Dome Kemish Ein Lo Eloka. It's like he has no God. You know he's learning the Torah. He's learning the Torah of Hashem. Shenemar it says the Pasuk in Devar Yamin, the Yamin Rabbim the Yisrael the Lo Eloka Emes. There were many days for the Jewish people without true gods. Ella, the Torah of the The only, the way that a person has to conduct himself is not only to study Torah, but also acts of kindness. Okay, so a person has to not only um, yeah. study Torah, not only be a chacham, they also have to be involved in acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that do with Chovas Alavavas? So, I, I guess what he means is that a person has to become a good person. A corrupt person, their mitzvahs won't be desirable. A person who's not a caring, considerate person, then the, their avodah Hashem is lacking even in that which they, um, which they do right. So and does everybody hold by this today? And yeah, yes, that is uh, definitely. All the, uh uh, the, the, a person has to be also taking Torah and Gemil Chasadim. Torah and Gemil Chasadim. Now, how much Gemil Chasadim and when is it appropriate to stop learning to do, go do a Chesed? That's a whole different question. Okay? Because uh, a certain amount it is. A certain amount it is. A friend of mine, okay, we're, we're stopping here, but a friend of mine was, uh, is a Balkore. And he puts in a lot of time to. Um, to, to prepare the parsha, okay, and he he was speaking to me as for an etza for advice. What what do I think that maybe he should stop the laning, and yeah. he'll have more time to learn with other things hmm. that he has on his uh, on his list of things that he's uh, goals that he has in mind for himself to learn, and. And I told him, you, you could wait for a second. And we were discussing different reasons. And ultimately, one reason that I told him, he liked this reason. And the reason was that it's a tremendous opportunity for Gemil Chasadim. That it's not good just to be Osik in Torah alone. Here he has 100 people every Shabbos are being Yote, their midst of Kriya Satora because of him, because of the hours of preparation that he put in to preparing the Kriya Satora. So that's a certain shleimus and avodas Hashem that a person must have that well-roundedness that they have to be not just involved in doing things that only benefit themselves, but they have to be thinking about what they could contribute. You have to be a at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's